Hi there. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, happy Victoria Day. Welcome to a bit of my day. And if you are a, in live amongst the members of the Commonwealth, uh, perhaps you celebrate Victoria Day today. Um, today's This is the weekend that we celebrate Queen Victoria's birthday, even though it it's not her birthday. We just this is our weekend that we celebrate her birthday, and uh, it used to be that on the Monday we would fire off fireworks, and now it seems to be an all weekend thing. Oh my goodness! <sighs> I'm a fireworks Scrooge, but you know that I've gone on that rant before. But our Queen Victoria, there's Albert's wonderful exhibition that he held, her beloved Albert, whom she loved. This is a really nice book that I found. Um, she had a roundabout way of making it to the throne, but uh, boy, oh boy, she... Uh, She was on the throne for a long time, and she was very young when she ascended to the throne. We thought Elizabeth was young, but um, Victoria was even younger. In fact, there were many who tried to use that as an excuse that this, she couldn't possibly reign being that young and uh, and uh, and a woman at that. <sighs> But uh, she was uh, another one of those uh, small but mighty <laughs> women, and uh, and she uh, she had a long reign. And Elizabeth, boy, she uh, Elizabeth beat her out. Who'd have thought? But Elizabeth lived such a long life that even taking the throne, also at a young age, but um, because she lived so long, that helped her win the contest. Uh, Charles just won't have a chance when you take the throne in your seventies. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to have those kinds of jubilees. I, uh, the poor man is unwell. We'll be lucky if he has a fifth jubilee. I, I, I wish him well, but I guess we'll see. Um, apparently, she uh, did not like being pregnant and did not enjoy um, small children. <laughs> Even though she was very good at popping them out. Uh, apparently she had no problem there and uh, of course that also means that uh, it sounds like her romantic life was uh, well we all know how much she adored her beloved Albert she had his bed set with his clothing laid out every day for the rest of her life and uh, she loved him so much and was buried with her wedding veil on so anyhow, so happy Victoria Day if you celebrate Victoria Day uh, today. Um, let me put that away. I am working on, uh, I'm not working on the, uh, that really pretty one with the mother and the, and the two little children on the front. Um, for this morning at least. I'm working on um, um, Moosen, Moosen's Improved Ready Reckoner. Um, and I'm going to do my own, I'm going to do a play on the version of uh, the one that The flip-flop journal that Johanna Clough. Thank you to those of you who helped me phonetically. Um, that Johanna Clough uh, recently did a video on, on a flip-flop journal that she had been working on. 
So, uh, but I'm doing, I'm switching it up a little bit and, uh, and I'm going to be, um, I want to do my flip flops with a little, a little tougher paper. I'm going to play with, uh, some, some uh, cardstock from file folders. It needs to be slightly smaller than the book. And uh, so I'm going to play with some of these and I don't want to go overboard, but I thought I might add in some, uh, if I've got any two-sided, there, there's a two-sided. I thought about maybe adding in some two-sided scrapbook paper. I think that one's also two-sided. This was from Jeanette, so she used some of it, but she knew that I'd also... She's she's a smart uh, scrapbooker. Isn't that pretty? Of course, Paisley. I love anything Paisley. So um, I, I'm toying with the idea of maybe Throwing in a couple, that's cute, um, throwing in a couple of pages of, uh, just for some color of some scrapbooky kind. Now, what I want to do is, um, I have the end papers ready. But they're going to have to go in last because what I want to do is for the flip-flops, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the flip-flops, you may need to pause, go watch Johanna's, um, Johanna's video. i got to grab something. There. I want that. Um... It, uh, the pages flop out. It's sort of like uh, an accordion journal, but pages can flip out in all kinds of directions. And then you fold them back up and they go into the book. And she makes a, uh, a soft cover for it. And I may rue the day that I've opted to try this with a hard cover. But, uh, and she made, she has several different sizes, but the one she works on in her video is a smaller size. So I'm opting for the time being to do a smaller size. So while we're here, I'm just going to go around the edge and get rid of that white that's glaring at me. with some, I think it's smoke. Black soot. I think I may still put a little bit of, I may still ed, age the edges a little bit. At first I thought I wanted this side and then I thought, for such a tiny book, that's too large of a pattern. And I flipped it over and thought, oh my goodness, I like this side. So we're going to do this side. And whether this turns out or not, we shall see. It's beautiful and sunny here today. And it's going to get hot. It's going up to 24, and then the rest of the week is going up to 27. I have a feeling we are in for a warm summer. When it gets that hot already where I live in May, that is, um, that's unusual. It's not completely out of the norm, but 
The May long weekend for us is um, still usually sort of warm during the day if the sun's out and then cools right off at night, which of course I love. We would go camping on the May long weekend. If you live where I live, we always called it the May 2-4 weekend, even though it didn't always land on the 24th. I believe it's always the third weekend in May, I believe. There's a Canadian somewhere watching who will correct me. But I believe that it's one of those holidays that changes up depending on when it falls that year. <coughs> Pardon me. But for some reason where we live, it just started getting called the May 2-4 weekend. And uh, again, if you live in my area, a 2-4 is actually <laughs> refers to a case of beer. The, at least the kind of case of beer that has 24, at the time, bottles in it. And if you told someone, oh, I'm just heading over, I'm going to get a... I'm going to get a 2-4. Um, where I live, people will know what you're talking about if you're going to go on over to get a 2-4. Even if you're buying 6 or 18 or usually a 2-4. <laughs> Canadians do like their beer. I am not one. I'm not a... Uh... There's only one beer that I thoroughly find thirst quenching and enjoy and that is Guinness. Guinness I can glug. Thank goodness Guinness has come up with a zero alcohol version and it's delicious. So um, now it could be that I haven't had a Guinness in a couple of years now that uh, it tastes delicious but personally as a Guinness lover Oh yeah, that looks nice. Let's come down a little bit. That look nice? When I take my hands away, it looks so much bigger than it really is. <laughs> um, so what I want to do, so these cards will actually, let me come back out again. So these cards will actually flip out and then you will join them together. She joined hers together with really beautiful raggedy edged. Um, they, they'll just keep going and going and you can flip them out, several of them out. I thought that one might be fun to keep because I got it from a, um, I made these from file folder. So this, um, I can't show you, I, I just don't have the room to show you how big this could get, but I can't put the end papers on till the end, till, till I have my flip-flops ready to go, because um, I want to, for the flip-flops that will be um, attached to the book cover, I want them to um, be really extra sturdy. So I'm going to use cloth for those flip-flops. And then I will follow Johanna's, uh, her suggestion. And she uses torn up paper for her um, to attach hers. And what I've done is I've saved some of the paper from making the anchor pages for the other, the mom and baby book that, that's going to be a domestic goddess book. I saved some of the uh, off, off tears because <laughs> I didn't use scissors and uh, I'll be using these, some of that paper to make the hinges for all these little cards. So I'm gonna pause right now while I age these with ink 
and uh, and then we'll get back to work and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this part of the file folder. Okay, so for these ones, I have them inked on both sides because there will be flipping and flopping. And uh, now I want to get, I want some of them to be lined ahead of time. So I don't know if you're like me, but I have a hard time um, writing without lines. I need lines. So I have one of these. It's a template for drawing lines. And the nice thing about it is, let's find, let's use this blank paper here so I can show you. The nice thing about it is, um, say you want to be able to uh, write, um, and then, but you didn't want the lines to show. I'm trying to find a pencil. Do you think I can find a pencil? Ah, here we go. And you didn't want the lines to show. You can go in with pencil, draw in your lines. So there's, there's my lines. Do your writing. And then when your ink is dry, you can um, erase your lines and everyone will think, wow, that person writes really straight. <laughs> These are so handy. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I don't know. I type in line template for journaling, something like that into the search engine. It'll come up and they're just really handy to have. And it, uh, like I said, it's great for if you do calligraphy for uh, envelopes and you want to, again, make sure that it's straight. I do that often as a shower or wedding gift for uh, friends or family. I will offer to um, do their... Um, to do the, to address their envelopes for their wedding invitations by hand for them and it comes in really handy. So for a few of them I want to um, I want to do lines ahead of time. So I'm going to there we go micron marker. I don't want them to be perfect. I want these to be, um, there we go. I want these to be a little haphazard, so they're not necessarily going to match up. And some might be longer than others, and some might be shorter. And I'm going with black ink. Normally I would go with brown. I'm going to do as if there's some flaws in it as well. In some of the areas. So, and there you've got inked lines. Let's do another one. And uh, that way, those ones will be available for the person to just uh, do as they will with it. want it to look a little bit like maybe they did it themselves. Do you know what I mean? I 
can't remember if I finished my thought for because the cover is black with a bit of yellow on it um, I'm opting for black ink when normally I would use brown ink yeah that looks nice I'll do one more yeah so I'm doing it now uh, because I think it will be easier than when I get it all um, hinged together. Okay, I think that looks good. If I want, if I want to, um, I'll have the option a little bit later to um, to do a couple more before I do the final uh, gluing of the hinges. Now, this one had. Um, some writing on it from it being um, uh oh black soot from it being a file folder so I'm going to make a little tuck spot there and cover that up Let's leave this open because I was using the coffee. I'll at least do the top, but I'm going to have to use my clip again because I'm going to round that edge at the bottom. I hope this turns out. It's always worth a try. So if I want to do that, then I'm going to, where is my, I've got to find my art glitter glue, found it. So I'm going to go there, but on this side, I'm going to do there. And I'll put it on like that and hopefully get this correct. There we go. Let's do this before I forget. I think it's almost time to buy a new bottle. I try and make my art glitter glue bottles, as you can tell, <laughs> last as long as possible and refill them. But I find I tried to rinse it out and refill it because it's It'll, it'll thicken up too, the way 3-in-1 um, and Fabri-Tac will. But, of course, it's water-based, so I f it doesn't thin down as easily. And I just find that eventually it gets so gunky that sooner or later I have to treat myself to a new bottle. And I've got two here 
that one's in worse shape than the other, although this one looks pretty nasty as well. Um, we'll see how long I can make this last. Hmm? <laughs> Scissors. because that's got a fresh edge there. I guess I could have waited because I'm going to be using my little there. Black set. There. So that's covered up now, but it's still a little, little tuck spot. <clears throat> I don't think it necessarily had to be covered up. Might have added to the character just to leave it the way it was, but um, you know. Now I want, I want to find my scraps of old papers. I have this drawer with scraps of old papers, and I just want to frame a couple of them. Oh, I like that. That's from that bag. <coughs> Let's use some of this. So, ha ha ha, guess what I want to do, ink, ink, espresso, I just want to ink along that edge, the torn edge. And then you'll see what I've got planned. And I bet you already know. All right. Glue stick. Glue stick. That's mucky. The nice thing about glue stick is it glues um, clear, so I can just go along the edge there. I don't want to take up too much room, and I don't care if it's a little wrinkly or mucky. It adds to the character. I think this time I'll go along this instead. I'm holding it up to the window in case you're wondering why is she holding it up? I can't see what she's doing. I want to make sure. Boy, that just was barely the right length, wasn't it? Boy, I wonder if I could. But I want the torn edge. No, I'm just going to cut that off. I 
trying to decide if I'm going to sew around the edges of these pages or not. Because they're cardstock, they could certainly handle it. Johanna did hers with paper. And I can see the advantages of both. All right. Let's ink. I inked it. I inked it. Okay. That way, there's still room in the center for journaling. Well, it just shows you, you never know when you're going to use up even the tiniest little scrap from something else. Because I think these were the, this paper bag was the end papers for Mrs. Cratchit's prayer book. Wow, that just fit. It was really meant to be. Oh, I like that. Now, because this is um, my first go at this, if it doesn't turn out, <laughs> it may end up being mine. And if it turns out, it will end up in my Etsy shop. And I guess we'll all find out together, won't we? Now, when I'm finished here, which will be soon, because I'm running out of my 30 minutes, um, I'm going to keep working, but I'll catch you up on what I get done. But in the meantime, if you're wondering what it is I'm doing, like I said, Head over to Johanna, and uh, Johanna, and um, then you'll understand what, where I got the inspiration for this, even though I'm doing mine a little bit differently. All right, so we've got these done, but I'm going to do some. I think I might throw one or two scrapbook paper in just to throw the eye off and go, oh, where'd that come from? And, uh, and I'll show you what I get done the next time we get together. So thanks for joining me and uh, thanks for helping me along as I work on uh, Mussen's Improved Ready Reckoner Form and Log Book. Pretty cool. Take care. Have a great rest of your day and uh, if you're celebrating Victoria Day, have a great Victoria Day. Bye.